Being at the heart of the offshore industry, I get to hear about all the latest fads, all the latest easy passports, all of the latest you know, cheap options for going offshore. Not only from people that I'm working with, but from everyone here on YouTube and our website and everywhere else. And there is one fad that my team came across, people still talking about on blogs and on forums, even though I and others talked about how this was just not working anymore years ago. I'm going to share with you the so-called easiest citizenship in the world that's just not true. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson, and here at Nomad the Capitalist, we help seven and eight figure entrepreneurs legally go where they're treated best. You can learn more about us at nomadcapitalist.com in the country that people online are still claiming is the easiest country in the world to become a citizen of is Panama. Now, Panama has a number of different residence programs. A number of years ago, they created the Friendly Nations Visa, which is one of the easier residence programs for citizens of about 50, mostly Western countries, where you go and put money in the bank, you open up a company, or you buy some cheap real estate, and you get a residence permit pretty, pretty quickly. Permanent residence, you can live there, you can not live there. And there's been a lot of confusion around that, less so uh, around some of the more expensive options for non friendly nations qualifying citizens that are more expensive. But for friendly nations citizens, I've heard all the different rumors. People go to conferences and they say, if you live in Panama one day a year, you're a tax resident, you don't have to pay U.S. taxes anymore. Utterly ridiculous. I've heard uh, all the different rumors. And what is still being talked about apparently online is how if you go and get this friendly nations visa, or if you go and get any kind of residence in Panama, and you have this permanent resident status that you can, after five years, apply for Panamanian citizenship. And that is true. But here's what is missing in the equation. What's missing in the equation of any naturalization program, whether it's what I call a paper residence, which is what people promote Panama as, you have a residence permit. On paper, there's no real legal requirement, or in the case of Panama, it's basically a non-existent requirement to spend any time there. So you can get your Panama residence permit, you can get your paper residence, and then you can go and live somewhere else, continue your lifestyle unabated. You come back you know, every once in a while just to pop your head in. And then after the five-year naturalization period, you go and apply for citizenship. Now, different countries work different ways. In some countries, that could work. Some countries, it could work for certain people who get lucky, but not for others. In certain countries, they just don't care. Generally, that doesn't last forever. Uh, in certain countries, uh, they'll, you know, like through some of the golden visa programs, they'll, they'll say, listen, if you spend this much time, you know, one week, two weeks, a month, whatever, you'll get your citizenship. But you have to understand what the terms of the paper residence are. And when there are no terms, you have to assume a little bit of risk. And that's what's happened with Panama. Now, back in 2015, I thought Panama and the Friendly Nations visa program was a, a decent option for people who wanted to get themselves on the path to a second passport. But then... Uh, towards the end of 2015, I started talking to a lot of folks who were actually living in Panama part of the year and who had had residence. I started talking to more lawyers during my time in Panama, and I started hearing a lot of stories about people who weren't being naturalized, even though they had met this requirement. And so what you have to understand about the world is, you know, if you go to Germany, for example, and you meet their requirement. I believe it's eight years to become a citizen. It's a certain number of days you must spend in Germany in that eight years. It's a lot of time in Germany, of course. They want people to live there. They want you to speak the language, know the culture. It's pretty intense, but they pretty much play it by the book. If you check off the boxes, you will become a German citizen. But when the boxes are very nebulous, you have to ask yourself, you know, is this going to work? And so not only were people who we're, not, we're spending that you know one day a year or one week a year taking their vacation in Panama not being naturalized, but people who were actually living there were not being naturalized. They would file an application, it would go through the process, and in the case of Panama, it ultimately goes to the office of the president and it needs to be signed off on. And so what basically was happening was there were an increasing number of applications just sitting there and not being signed off on. And so this to me is a lesson of why you don't always want to look for easy. Right? So many times you go online, you know, I've tried to, you know, write over 2,000 blog articles that are, and, and now our team is writing as well, 
uh, you know, articles that give you an unbiased perspective. Uh, we try and make videos and say, look at the big picture, look at all the options. Now, if you go down to Panama because someone told you it's the cheapest and the easiest and the fastest and this and that, and you go and talk to a lawyer, I know many of them, many of them don't respond to calls or don't answer emails, but there are a few that do. And if you find one of those, uh, they're going to tell you, yeah, Panama is great. And they're not going to tell you to think about Malta. They're not going to tell you to look somewhere else. Maybe they'll tell you to buy some real estate, which they earn a commission on, right? And so, you know, your interests are not necessarily aligned because their goal is promoting Panama. That's what they sell. And I think that's dangerous. Not because Panama is bad. And I'll tell you in a second, I think it does serve a good purpose to have residents in Panama. I'll talk about that. But the idea that you simply want to buy a commodity in hopes that it's going to in turn into something you have to understand the track record. Now, track records can change, and I've seen that happen where something is going so well for a while, and then suddenly it just stops. And when you're going through a program like a paper residence, you have to accept the risk that at some point the party might end and the country might just decide to tighten down the, the, the laws and say, you know what, effective next year, you got to spend six months in the country. We're not giving you citizenship. Some countries do that, or they might push it out. You know, Georgia pushed it out a couple years ago where they said six years to become a citizen is now 10. And so if you're in progress, you just added four years to your, your timeline, right? And so that is a risk that you assume, which is why I think if you're going to do paper residences, if you're just going to, you know, have different programs that lead to naturalization, I've had people who will do three of them together, right? And you have the privilege to live in those three countries but you're probably not gonna become a citizen of all three countries because something like what's happening in Panama has happened. And so a number of years ago, I started talking about what I had learned from people in Panama. And I then started hearing other people in the industry kind of starting to echo that and saying, yeah, you know, Panama, good for residents, not for citizenship. But yet we find people who are still saying it's the easiest citizenship in the world. Here's what I believe Panama is. I believe it is a great place to live, um, whether you're an American and you actually want to spend a substantial period of time there, or whether you're anyone else and you want to make it your formal tax home by spending time there or by through uh, one of the loopholes that you can use. It's a great place to make it your tax home. Every country that you're leaving has their own requirements. Uh, we talked about that with my tax-friendly quadrant video, but uh, not a bad place for that. Also not a bad place as a plan B uh, what I call back pocket residence, right? You want a place to go, particularly if you're American, Canadian, uh, maybe even British, you know, somewhere where it's easy to get to Panama. The culture is somewhat similar. You know, if you're American, they use the U.S. dollar in Panama. Uh, so it's a comfortable place. It's not too far away. It's not too far away, uh, you know, in terms of cultural uh, as well as, as physical distance. And so it's a good place to say, hey, if I need to get out of here, if I want to escape high taxes in my country in the future, if something crazy happens in my country in the future, just as a plan B, I'll keep it in my back pocket. I'll go there, you know, one day, three days, seven days a year, whatever it is. And it'll be my, you know, my, my plan B. Not a bad thing to have. The Friendly Nations visa, there have been rumors it's going away. I would get in on, on that now if you want to get in on that. But there are other options. You can put money in the bank. You can buy real estate. You can invest in forestry, lots of different options to get residents in Panama, even if one program goes away. But I wouldn't be relying on it as a citizenship. You can certainly have the permanent residence for five years and then file for citizenship, but it's possible things may change, but it's also possible that you're going to go down the same path where you'll be waiting for five years, maybe even 10 years, to see what's the status of your application. It's sitting on a desk next to the president's office. And so I think. This is why chasing the thing that's easiest uh, doesn't always make a lot of sense uh, because you know, countries don't want to be the place where you just go and you just you know, fly through once in a while and here's your passport. There are still countries that do that. We don't talk about all of them because I think that it ruins it, quite frankly, and you've seen that in other countries. Uh, so Panama, in my opinion, great for residents, not so great if you're getting a citizenship. Not a bad option to potentially try for citizenship, I guess. But if you're thinking to yourself, hey, listen, in five years, I'm out of here. I'm renouncing my U.S. citizenship. My plan is entirely centered around Panama. I think you'll be disappointed, which is why real world experience, actually seeing how things are working, reading the tea leaves on trends around the world and actually knowing, you know, what are the, the actual experiences people are having is more important than what people are saying on blogs and forums talking about theory. 
How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.